coming up on this week's World Stories. The hunger weapon in South Sudan. A new migrant route through Romania. But we begin in Catalonia, where the political crisis surrounding the issue of independence from Spain continues unabated. Many businesses are considering a move away from the region. Josep Maria Minguel is in downtown Barcelona, together with thousands of others eager to send a clear signal to the Catalan parliament, declare independence. But why? It's a chance to have a normal country, a country that can develop and make use of its resources and pass its own laws. That's it. Earlier, Minguel was busy working at a company he set up with partners, the mid-sized company that supplies chemicals such as enzymes for beer production. But while business is good now, what about major corporations leaving Catalonia? In economic terms, there will be repercussions for Spain and Europe due to the loss of trust. But that was predictable. Europe was slow to respond to our warnings. They claim we're a prosperous region with a high degree of self-determination, but for years the People's Party in Madrid has been rolling back our autonomy. And it's not just the big banks who are leaving Catalonia. Many mid-sized companies are considering the move too. Famous sparkling wine producer Freshenet is among them. I propose to the board that we relocate our headquarters should there be a unilateral declaration of independence. Freshenet is determined to remain in the European Union. That stance often does not go down well with customers in Catalonia, the home of Spanish sparkling wine. It's had an impact on Freshenet, although not that serious. These people are a variety of Catalans who are not keen on how I see Spanish unity. Many economists already agree that uncertainty about the ultimate status of Catalonia will take a heavy toll on the region. The machinery, premises and other assets will stay, the workforce too. What will change is future investment. It will disappear because we will no longer be able to give investors legal security, access to capital and the European dimension. Still. Josep Maria Minguel and millions of his fellow Catalans believe the only way to a better life is through complete independence from Spain. For years, the people of South Sudan have suffered from the consequences of civil war. Food is scarce, supplies barely enough to feed an undernourished population. More than a million children are going hungry. Hanan Yaware has been waiting for this moment for six weeks. She's walked four hours from her village to the refugee camp in Bentiu to get food to feed her family. I'm very grateful. Now I've got some beans. Next comes the children's food and the grain and oil too. The NGO Welthungerhilfe from Germany, together with the UN World Food Program, provides food for more than 200,000 people here every month, under the most difficult circumstances. There are frequent attacks, which require UN soldiers to protect the camp. But Hannah doesn't live in the camp. For the mother of four, the most dangerous part of her journey is just about to begin. Transporting the food to the village is very difficult. But I have no choice. My family is starving. But if I take everything at once, armed men will take it all away from me. So I have to make several trips. If I have only a little bit on me, then they can only take part of the food away. Government troops and rebels have been fighting here for years. What started as a political conflict between the president and his vice president quickly took on ethnic dimensions. 
pitting the two largest ethnic groups, the Dinka and the Nur, against each other. The Minister for Humanitarian Affairs is seen as one of the few balanced voices inside the government. He admits mistakes have been made. There are people who take law into their own hands. Even within the government, there are some individuals who are unruly. And that's why, uh, I don't know whether you heard that, some people were arrested and are being actually taken to court. But people like Kana Nyaware have little access to the courts and justice. Before embarking on the treacherous hike back to her home village, Hannah visits her mother in the camp. Hannah says she feels abandoned by her husband, who's gone underground to fight with a rebel group, by the international community because of the continual difficulty to keep food on her table, and above all by her own government, whose soldiers she lives in fear of as she makes her way back home. The proportion of women in the German Bundestag has dropped to 31% since the September 2017 election, buckling the trend since the early 1980s. Now the idea of introducing a quota is attracting growing support. For Claudia looking Michel, it's over. After four years as Member of Parliament, she has to clear out her desk, like many of her female colleagues. Partly because her CDU party did so badly, and partly because women lost out in their own party rankings. We have a quorum that says every third seat should be filled by a woman. Well, every third is not every other seat. And the thing is that in most people's heads, who put the list together, this percentage has become the maximum number. They say one, two, three. Four, five, six, that's the next woman seat. Seven, eight, nine, that has to be a woman. Where does this leave us? Women's participation in the German parliament is truly not a success story. For three decades, they struggled along with less than 10%. It was the appearance of the Green Party in the early 80s and later the left party's entry into the Bundestag that changed the dynamics. Partly thanks to that quota, recently some 37% of German MPs were women. I think that in society and in the media, there was this idea that everything is okay now. One third of the members of parliament are female, we have ministers, we have a female chancellor. But this is misleading, because the percentage of women in parliament does not reflect women's share of society, which is over half of the population. Even in the conservative parties, women are beginning to get angry. Although most men oppose it, they are pushing for a quota. Men want to protect the privileges they have. There's no reason for them to support these new regulations. If they get implemented, then men will be reducing their own chances of a political career. As long as women agree, as long as society doesn't protest, things won't change. Helga Lukashat wants a parity law to be implemented, similar to those other European countries already have in place. And although in the probable new government coalition only the Greens seem to be for a quota, she is still optimistic that the regulation will be implemented one day. But that's too late for Claudia looking michel who can only hope that future generations of female politicians will find a more level playing field. Our last report takes us to Romania, where the number of migrants and refugees being rescued off the coast has seen a sudden rise. Authorities there believe smugglers are looking for new routes. At the mercy of the Black Sea, crammed onto a far too tiny boat heading towards Romania. This is also how Ivan and Rukav Baizani came here two weeks ago with their children. They are still shook up from their dangerous passage from Istanbul. We were afraid to set off after seeing what shape the boat was in. I got mad at my husband. We watched parts of the boat fall off, but it was too late. The waves were very high and water entered the boat. We were so scared. For several weeks, the Romanian Coast Guard has been encountering overcrowded smuggling boats day and night. Within a month, nearly 500 people from Iraq, Iran and Syria have fled across the Black Sea to Romania. 
The Coast Guard is concerned a new so-called Black Sea route could emerge from Turkey to Romania. The Byzanis are glad they survived. They hadn't been aware of the danger. All that mattered was to leave Turkey towards Europe, they tell us. The Black Sea route is an inside tip. We came through Turkey because it's easy to start from there and because many human traffickers are there. The Turkish police don't do anything about it. They're bribed by the smugglers. Having arrived in Romania, the human traffickers are arrested, their boats confiscated by the Romanian Coast Guard. Held together by nothing more than rust, numbers of decommissioned Turkish fishing and tourist boats are rising. Then now arriving at the ports of Constanza is a result of European refugee politics, according to refugee expert Adrian Herta. Desperate people always find a way. The fact that we have these ships on the Black Sea shows that the typical routes are shut down and are no longer an option. That's why an increasing number of refugees are landing in Constanza, and many Romanians are skeptical. The state should keep these people away from us. They shouldn't come to us like they did to Germany. Tragedies keep happening there. The Byzanis are glad they've made it, but Romania is only a temporary stop on their journey. They want to keep moving as soon as possible, to Sweden or Germany.